Personal notice changes my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. The Floaters, another adventure of George Valentine. Hey, hey, who is this? Who's this speaking? Oh, won't you wake up? Can't you wake up and turn? Hey, look, lady, it's two o'clock in the morning. But I already told you, my name is Bernice Hillary, and you've simply got to come here. Huh? I don't know anybody to turn come to. Come where? Why? It's only a few hours' drive for you. I'm the fourth cabin on the left, the border motel. Huh? It's a big place with palm trees and cactus. The Mexican border, it isn't far. Mexican border? The American side, that's the trouble. Only drive fast. Please, drive fast. You've got to get here before daybreak. I said, why? What's the matter? Will you calm down a minute? Will you be nice oh, no, and... No, 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 no. The fourth cabin. You can find it. It's a big one off by itself. My car is parked right beside it. I, I can't stay here and I can't leave. I'm all alone. I don't know what to do. If I run away, they'll catch me. And if they do, they... They might hang me. Wasn't much of a drive. Oh, no. Oh, this doesn't look like much of a place either, does it, Brooks? Yeah. Might have been once. Nobody awake but us chickens. Here, that's the third cabin. Uh-huh. Yeah, the motel's all run down. Yeah. Business on the border must be slacking off. Hey, wait a minute. Here's her car. Mm, if it is, she certainly doesn't need anybody's help. Enough chromium to start a bicycle shop. Yeah. Come on, let's take a look. Probably locked, George. No, it isn't. It's what? Excuse me, George. No, you don't. This isn't a drive-in movie, Buster. What are you doing sitting in that car? Excuse, I said, chump. Slow down, will you? Senor, I take it back. You don't excuse. Hey, okay, you don't, but the senorita will. Excuse me. Hey, you see. Oh. oh, what a chump. George, are you all right? Oh, yeah, sure. Nobody here but us chickens, huh? First one I ever saw with a mustache. He tried to hide when we came along. But here, see? He'd been rifling the dash compartment. Yeah. Hey, the car's registered to Miss Bernice Hillary, St. Paul, Minnesota. Well, Brooksy, she's a long way from home. <laughs> Brooks, that's right. Yeah. You're Bernice, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Come in. Okay. Now, will you please... You got here before sunrise, didn't you? Dawn's just coming, isn't it? <laughs> hey, 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 what's George, going on? she's hysterical. Oh, no, no, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm just sorry I made you go to all this trouble. Coming down here for nothing... For nothing. Well, look, we're here now, Bernice. So what's the story? For better or worse, let's have it. Well, I've only been here about 36 hours. I stopped over to have my car fixed. I'm on my way to Mexico City. That's where my best friend lives. She married a man who has a tango band. Oh, it's wonderful if you like that. Down yeah, well, there, well, wait you? a minute. Let's stay in one key, huh? You're a little young, Bernice, to be galloping off down there all alone, aren't you? I'm 21. It's none of your business. I didn't ask you here all to discuss... All right, all right, all right. So you're on your way to Mexico. Father know about it? I said it's none of your business, any of it. Come on, get to it. You stopped here and last night something happened. What? I... I met the woman last night for the first time. Huh? She's German or mid-European or something. She didn't tell me herself, but the chambermaid did. I was curious. Who is this you're talking about, Bernice? Helga, I think her name is. Not even a citizen. People sneak back and forth here, you know. They never get farther, but they do stay here for a few hours. Well, anyway, she was talking to some friend, I guess. 
Real sour-looking apple. He coughed a lot. And then one of those immigration men came in the other end of the bar. Well, at least I guess that's what it was. Anyway, she asked me if they could bring their drinks over to my cabin. She and the man, I mean. So they slipped out. Well, I didn't even come over here until hours later. I had to pick up my car at the garage. You're wasting a lot of words. Are there two rooms in this place? Mr. Valentine, I started to go to bed in here. I- I'd forgotten all about those two. No, wait a minute. Other rooms through here, I guess, huh? No, wait, wait, please. I didn't have anything to do with it. Not anything. I just opened the door. I'll look for myself, I... thanks. I catch on fast. But I see what you mean. They're both dead. It's a double suicide, George. Yeah, Angel. Poison. Looks like it hit her harder than it did him. There are two whiskey glasses there. This little box is what it must have been in. Ew. Not almonds, but it's something that smells a little like it. Mm-hmm. There he is in the chair. Looks like maybe she changed her mind when it was too late, tried to make it to the phone. I didn't see all that at first. Can you blame me? All I could see was something dark, and I touched it, and she was... Dead, yeah, well, never mind, Bernice. Who's the manager of this motel, the owner? Well, Fred Dexter, I think that. Is. Go find him, will you, Brooksy? Yeah, sure, George. Hmm. Washed out looking blonde. Muddy skin, cheap clothes. So that's Helga, huh? She was a sad sort of person, I guess. Chambermaid says she's been trying to get into the country for months legally. It's only a few blocks. She'd sneak over this far in the evening sometimes. Sure, I know. To pretend she was already an American instead of a floater in nowhere, living with the chickens on a dusty border waiting for some quota. Yeah, lots of people like that nowadays, Bernice. Waiting at the Golden Gate. Guy looks about the same. Holes in his shoes. Skinny, gray hair. You said he coughed a lot. I don't know who he is. I don't know and I don't care. That's why I sent for you, Mr. Valentine, to tell the police... Yeah. You get mixed up in anything, and your father or whoever it is will find out where you are, hold you back to St. Paul. Look, I'll pay you a thousand dollars. It's written all over you, Bernice. And it's also written all over you how mad you are because these two people were inconsiderate enough to pick your room to die in. Well, kid, for my money, you ought to be spanked. And if you think I want to face the music for you, you... Please, please, Mr. Valentine. Stay there. (gasps) Well, early caller... I guess I got the wrong cabin. No, no, wait a minute. Looking for Miss Hillary? This ain't the cabin I thought it was. Really, it ain't. You work here, don't you? You're the chambermaid. Uh, look, mister, is, um, is Helga there? Helga? Yeah, she's here. Why? Uh, she's a friend of mine. Asked me to keep something, that's all. Keep what? Well, it's a purse. Only I'm on my way to work now, mister, and I just... Hey, what's that? Hey, what's the matter? Hey, Bernice! Bernice, come back here. Hey, you... Oh, for the... Oh. Okay, chambermaid, come in here, will you? Come on. Who? What are you talking about? Dexter's my name, Fred Dexter. Yeah, I figured. But where is... That's Janie, laundress, cook, bottle washer. She's on her way to work, that's all. Getting my breakfast. And don't get so lathered up. Cops will be here, nothing to steam about. Been plenty of suicides in this town before. Okay, maybe you're right. (laughs) Plenty of suckers, too, I'll bet. Just like me. Call the police, Mr. Valentine. Now we'll just wait. What about this guy who coughed? Who was he? He and that Helga dame, birds of a feather. Nothing to live for, and they flock together. It's easy to drink your last toast if there's somebody with you to keep your courage up. He never would have been admitted, made the quota, so. Why not? Yeah, but I said, what about him? Who was he? You're stubborn. Why don't you leave well enough alone? That's what the people do down here. That crazy dame who skipped out on a bill, Bernice Hillary? Forget her. She can't get far. If they do find her, there's nothing to say. It's a closed case. Buster, for the tenth time, I'm just passing some advice. The guy who coughed, I don't even know his name. Seen him a number of times the past few years. He was an American citizen, wasn't he? Oh, sure, sure. But he was sick. 
broke. Lived on sleeping pills, whiskey, and dreams. Always been that way. Bought a case. Came here to get rich and didn't. There's a lot of money floating back and forth, you know, if you're smart enough to latch on or something. He was. Are you? <laughs> Look at this rat's nest. I had big ideas once. Thought I might latch on to something. Oh, stupid. Okay, that Mexican mustache who hit me. How about him? I never saw him in my life. Okay, then this woman, Janie, who works for you. She's fat, reads movie magazines. I know what she's like. I just want to know where she lives. You mean a room? Where is it? How should I know? In town someplace. Why? You want a date? I'm going to do a little floating around myself, Buster. Maybe I can latch you onto something. George, where have you been? Well, I finally found that chambermaid Janie's place in town, Angel. But, George, Never I've mind. been... Now, listen. She was keeping that purse for Helga like she told me, all right. Nothing in it much. Kleenex, comb, about 16 bucks. Eyebrow pencil, handkerchief, period. And a torn lining. Somebody beat me to it. What do you mean? Oh, Brooksy, I have a tiny little emerald here. And around one end of it, a bit of platinum wire. What? Yeah, all told, worth a hundred bucks, maybe. But this is something jarred loose from something bigger when it was jerked out. A brooch, maybe. A what? Something worth plenty. You get it? That dame Helga shouldn't have been so sad after all. Maybe she didn't have a citizenship, but at least she had... Then he shouldn't have been sad either. The man who caught. Huh? That's what I've been trying to reach you for. They must have owned that thing together. Darling, I checked the immigration people, like you said. And she wasn't here illegally, not this time. The two of them were married several months ago, down in Ensenada. Well, how do you like that? Motors go flying out the window, don't they? That's what I mean. Helga was the wife of an American citizen, and they had something worth money, too. So they had everything to live for. Why would they commit suicide? To be more blunt, Brooksy, who murdered them? Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. People are sensitive to seasonal changes, that's for sure. But do you know that the gasoline in your car is also sensitive to seasonal changes? You bet it is. And that's why Chevron Supreme gasoline is climate-tailored to each different altitude and temperature zone. This scientific tailoring is based on year-round weather reports from all over the West. Today, tomorrow, any day in the year... Depend on Chevron Supreme to get the best out of your car wherever you drive. Try a tank full of this premium quality gasoline. You'll notice right away how much better your car responds. Faster starts in any weather, smoother pickup in traffic, ping-free power on hills. In fact, you can't buy a better gasoline for today's high-compression engines. Get a tank full of climate-tailored Chevron Supreme tomorrow. Ask for it at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. And now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. The border between countries that collects the floaters from both sides like flies and dust against a screen. Only some of them don't get away. Like the mid-European Helga and the sad man who coughed. Yes, the couple who at first you thought had entered into a suicide pact, only now you realize they were both murdered. And right in the motel cabin of your client, Bernice Hillary, who has since disappeared. Only who committed murder and why? Look, mister, I told you the truth, didn't I? Why should I lie? I don't know, Janie. Why should you? But sure, I know they was married. Helga and that mopey-looking thing. But what of it? She's been married before. I don't see what she's seen in the guy anyway. Did you tell the police you knew? No, I didn't. Why not? Why should I? So they didn't ask me. Uh-huh. Leave well enough alone, mister. That's what I say. Even if people have been murdered? Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, Helga wasn't much a guess. Had to duck out of her own country for something a long time ago. I don't know what. I don't know anything, really, except... Well, she was a person. You know what I mean? Near broke her heart when Clark Gable was married. 
sort of liked her. Ah, all right, Jenny. She was a friend of yours, period. And yesterday, when she and her husband came in, she gave you her purse and asked you to keep it for her. I wonder why. Well, the holy gosh, how should I know? It's a tough town. Well, she was kind of nervous anyway, like maybe the two of them was being followed. I noticed it at the time. Okay, followed. Only I suppose you didn't know why the purse was so important. What was in it? Well, there was a few bucks in it. Don't kid me, that ain't he important. He means what was hidden in the lining. Something made out of emeralds and platinum. What? In Hilgis? Well, you don't think I'd be here if I did know about it. Oh, no, no, I, I don't mean that. I never stole anything in my life, and neither did Helga. I'm sure she wouldn't. It might have been a hair loom or something okay, like that. Okay, Jenny, okay. We're wasting our time. Skip it. Well, George, what are you going to tell the police? Everything I know about it, but I wish it were more. Well, 16 parole, here we are. It's a saddle shop, farm supplies. What? Yeah, gets a pretty good trade, too, doesn't it? I just want to double up on something the police already have found out, the poison. You remember that little box that smelled like almonds? Yeah. Well, they say it's some kind of stuff used on vermin. And this is the place that sold it. I told the police, Mr. Valentine. Don't remember much. <clears throat> Hot day for this time of year. Well, did a man buy it or a woman? Afternoon there, Fred. Nice weather. What did you say? Was it a man or a woman? Uh, lipstick. What? Fished out some change, out dropped a lipstick. I know, because I picked it up to hand it back. Afternoon, Mr. Gonzalez. George, so it was a woman. No, man. Man bought it. Okay, okay. Some guy mixed up with a woman. Hey, shut the door back there, will you, Fabio? All these people. What's back there anyway, Mr. Heinrich? Harness room. And a few slot machines, I could see. Oh, that's nice. All right, now you? listen, Buster. Make it fast. A man bought the poison yesterday. Who was it? Oh, no. It's what I told the police. You mean you run a gambling joint? It's not smart to tell on people. Oh, relax, son. Relax. Too hot a day for that. I'm blind. You're... Blind. But I didn't... But you've been saying hello by name to all these people who've been walking back... Old to... customers, that's all. Recognize their steps. Oh, I see. Okay, I, I'm sorry. Come on, Brooksy. You're going the wrong way, Mr. Valentine. Harness room is for friends. Oh, I got some money to throw away. Okay, friends. Thanks. Only, Brooksy, maybe you'd better... No, no, there's a ladies' table. Help yourself. George, why are we When going that door to... was open, I saw a guy, Angel, the far end of the room, sitting right by the window. A guy with a mustache. Hello, chum. Huh? Having nice cards? Senor... Uh, no. No, I'm not playing, no. I am. Come on outside. I want to talk. Uh, no, no, senor. Excuse me. Senor. Never mind that excuse routine again. Don't be tough. Not you. Not a sucker for the left. I said come on outside. I'm staying here. You say anything, say it here. Say goodbye. Oh, you chump. Stop it. Get away from me. No time to argue, you. senor. I you. Take it easy. Just a friendly little spat, folks. That's all. Fifteen dollars. People are upset when things happen. It's pretty bad for business. This isn't hush money, friend. We're paying you to take care of this guy. Oh, he'll come to in time. Need a beef steak, maybe. I'll bet he gets hamburger. You're a smart lady. But I better keep that wallet of his for him. Not so fast, Heinrich. He only has traveler's checks anyway. Traveler's checks? Yeah. Mexico City. Let me see that letter. Okay, try your Spanish. Jose? Oh, Jose, that's him. George, Jose, he, he's a detective. What? Be good reward in it if you can trace for me. 
Darling, he was on the trail of an emerald brooch. Oh, that's what it was. Emerald brooch stolen from... Stolen, George. Go on, go on. From, uh... Anyway, from, you pronounce it, jewelry store, Mexico City. Two months ago, signed by an insurance company. Uh-huh. That's it. Uh-huh. So tough boy here's a detective. He must have been looking in Bernice Hillary's car for the brooch. Hey, wait a minute, Angel. What are you talking about? Jose didn't start swinging till I tried to get him outside, to get him to move, to get him away from his chair by the window. Why? So that's what he was watching. Chromium. That old garage across the alley. George, that's Bernice Hillary's car. George. How long are we going to wait here? Well, it's a nice, comfortable car, isn't it, Brooksy? But it's dark already. We should tell the police. Well, oh, well, a board is a funny place. Collects the strays from both sides. Everybody looking for a little excitement or some easy money. Turning into floaters. Oh, George, really, oh, I don't... Listen. Out in the alley. You hear that? The key. Yeah, but you don't need them for the garage. No, somebody's got them for the car. Now, stay there in the seat. Duck down. All right. Do what I told you. They can't see me in the shadows. Who's in there? Easy, Buster. I'm right behind you. Oh. Yeah. Now turn around slow, Dexter. Yeah. Yeah, sure, Valentine. What did you do? Steal this car? What happened to Bernice? She drove away in the car this morning. What'd you do with her? I... Well, I... Brooksy, we know the guy who bought this poison was mixed up with a girl. What? What's that? So maybe she loaned him the car. No. No, I tell you... Where? Hey, what's the matter? There's no one in the street. Can't you start a cat... <gasps> Hello, Bernice. Mr. Valentine. Yeah, Mr. Valentine. The sucker you called down here last night to face the music for you. So you wouldn't have to interrupt your joyride to Mexico City. But I didn't do it. Helgen the man, it was a double suicide. That's right. That's what the police said. Sure, sure. Only let's have the brooch. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Valentine, I know it was silly of me to run out on you like that this morning. I rode around town intending to come back, but... Well, Mr. Dexter here saw me. He said I'd just be in more trouble. And he knew a place to hide the car, so I... Right across the alley from the place where the poison was bought? What poison? The poison that killed Helga and her husband. It's a little town. I don't know where else you'd hide a car. You're an old hand around here, Dexter. Only an old hand would know which place has a blind man running it. Convenient, so there wouldn't be any identification. So what? Lots of people know about it. Come on, Dexter. I want the brooch. What brooch? This morning I asked you where Janie lived. You said you didn't know. It took me a little time to find it, and when I found it, I found a certain purse. A brooch had been ripped out of it so fast, part of it stayed behind. In Janie's place. And she said you'd been there before. holding his hand against his coat pocket. Is it? (laughs) Brooks, stop it! All right. All right, so you've got it. Yeah. Stolen in Mexico City. Probably by Helga. It was hidden in the lining of a purse yesterday for only one reason, to smuggle it across the border, which he did. So people in this country don't even know about it. It was your big chance, wasn't it, Dexter? But what if it was? You know what it feels like to sit down here in the dust, losing your dough, and the big chance is floating right past you? Mr. Valentine, I didn't know he had it. Honestly, I didn't. Oh, sure, Bernice. Last night, who besides you knew that Helga and the man could be found in your cabin? Well, it was murder, lady. Plain and simple murder. And the police know it. No. There's a mountain no. of evidence 14 feet high stacked against the two of you. Look, I... I took the brooch. But I did it when I thought there was a double suicide. Nobody would know. Evidence or not, I, I don't know anything about murder. If you ask me, neither does Benice here. I know it. What? George! But you said that... I said a lot of things to find out things. Maybe a more complete autopsy and some rigmarole will help. But I gotta hang my hat on a piece of lipstick. And it's not easy. Lipstick? You mean Bernice's lipstick? No, no. Neither one of you went into action until hours too late. No, there's somebody else, Fred. Two other people. With perfect motives. And their actions check. Who? The man who bought the poison was mixed up with a woman. Had her lipstick in his pocket. Only I happen to remember a comb, some change, handkerchief, eyebrow, pencil, period. What's missing from the list? Lipstick. Whose purse was it missing from? Helga. Yeah, a floater, Brooksy, who couldn't stand to share the profits. 
And the new husband she married to get in this country knew he couldn't trust her to make a split. Sure, sure, Helga and the guy with the cough. The double suicides. How else could it have happened? Did you ever stop to think they could have killed each other? A double murder. Timed so perfectly it looked like a double suicide. The gingham dog and the calico cat. Yeah. Yeah, the husband was filled up with his own sleeping pills. Helga must have fed them to him earlier in the bar. Then she borrowed Bernice's room so he'd have a nice place to dine without being able to yell for help. And that gave him a chance to use the poison he bought from the blind Mr. Hunt. Mm-hmm. Helga didn't marry that guy for love. She did it cold-bloodedly to buy herself a ticket into the United States where she could safely dispose of the brooch. And to get the man to do it, she must have had to offer the poor groom a 50-50 split. Poor groom? Huh. Neither one of them was the kind who could take half of anything, and they both knew it. So the minute they were safely past immigration, bang. Only instead of a bang, they picked the obvious method down here. The one either one might have got away with. Poison suicide by just another float. The border. Sad part of the world. George, I wonder if Bernice and Fred Dexter will ever wake up to what their lives are really for. I think they've already started, Angel. Here's the car. Have the keys? Mm Mm-hmm. In my pocket. Look out, chicken. You know, George, I was awfully impressed with you. Hmm? The lipstick. Noticing a clue like that. You noticing lipstick. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you a secret. I just realized that clue was no good. But it was perfectly obvious Helga had just given it to her husband. Well, now, look, any man should have realized. Here, here, look. Look what was in my pocket. Hmm? One of your lipsticks. And can you prove when or where I got it? Probably been there for weeks. <laughs> Women are always doing that. George, you're right. It doesn't prove anything. But explain just one more thing to me, will you? Sure, sure, go ahead. This is not my lipstick. Like a rolling stone, a rolling wheel bearing gathers no moss. But when your car has gone 5,000 miles, you can be sure the wheel bearings have been exposed to a lot of grime, moisture, and road dirt. And dry bearings that need repacking are in danger of being ground to pieces by the weight of your car, to say nothing of the uneven tire wear they can cause. So why not play it safe and ask for the protective service offered to you at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations? Here, the experts are specially trained to keep your car's wheel bearings in A1 condition. They use only RPM wheel bearing grease, a lubricant that's tailor-made to seal out harmful grit, dust, and moisture. A lubricant that won't harden in cold weather, won't melt in hot weather. So, for your own safety and economy, have your wheel bearings repacked every 5,000 miles. Ask for this protective service at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations, where they say, and mean... We take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Virginia Gregg appeared as Brooksy. Jane Webb was heard as Bernice, Eddie Fields as The Mustache, Ruth Parrott as Janie, Tony Barrett as Dexter, and Joe Duvall as Heinrich. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.